السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we are today, inshallah, continuing the last part of Surah Ar-Rahman. Uh, we stopped last time at Ayah 62. And before we mentioned and we saw how, what the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For those who were, who were of the pioneers, who were of the racers to, to achieve and to do, to fulfill the what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from them. So Allah has talked to us about the uh, two gardens, the uh, paradise that's waiting for them. But now we're going to talk about other two gardens. So let's go. Bismillah. وَمِن دُونِهِمَا جَنَّتَان And below in ranks of the above two gardens, there are two other gardens. And remember, here we are talking about paradise. So what does this mean that we have higher paradise and lower paradise? So we know that we mentioned earlier that none of uh, us will enter Jannah except by the mercy of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam confirmed when he was asked, even you, Ya Rasulullah, you will not enter Jannah with your deeds and you are the messenger of Allah, you are the beloved of Allah. What was the answer of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, Wala ana illa an yatagamadani Allahu bi rahmatih. Not even me, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets me in his mercy. So we are in Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But our level in Jannah will be according to our deeds. Our stage in Jannah will be according to our deeds. So the first group that we talked about and the paradise that they are going to be in, those are the ones who hastened with fulfilling the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But about, what about these people now? What about these, this, these other gardens now? So the people of Jannah are divided into two parts. Those who are very quickly, the, who, who used to, per, to fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, without thinking, the, immediately, when they know that this is what Allah wants, they will do it. So these are called as-sabiqeen. And they have been mentioned in Surah Al-Waqa, insha'Allah, the surah that we are going to explain after Surah Al-Rahman, that وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ So those are the, uh, the people who worked and who did their best to be up front. So those people are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people are closer to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the first group. And we saw the, uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them in the previous uh, a few ayahs that we covered last time. The second group of Ahlul Jannah, of the people of Jannah, are Ashabul Yameen. So who are Ashabul Yameen? They, they would uh, do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they will not increase in, the, uh, in anything extra. They will not do anything extra. So once, and I'm, I'm going to give you an example about both, both, uh, both groups. So 
for those who are uh, who hasten to fulfill the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one companion came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his name Rabi'ah ibn Malik al-Aslami so he came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he, he said to him as'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah I want to be your companion in jannah so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and said a'inni ala nafsika bi kathrati sujood so do lots of salawat, do lots of prostration. So he, this, this companion did not want only to enter Jannah, but he wanted to be the companion. He wanted to get, to have the honor of being with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now let's move to the other example. Another companion came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him what should I do? Ya Rasulullah he said qala khamsu salawatin fil yawmi wal layla five prayers during the day and the night he said do I have to do anything extra? he said qala hal alayya ghayruha? qala la illa anta tawwa should I do anything else? he said no unless you wanted to, to do extra, unless you want to try to pray duha, to pray qiyam lay, to pray so-and-so, to, to do all the extras. So he said, la illa anta tawwa. Let's say the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam added, qala wa an tukhrija zakata malik. So you have to pay the zakah to purify your, your money. He said, قَالَ هَلْ عَلَيَّ غَيْرُهَا Do I have to do to pay anything extra? قَالَ لَا إِلَّا أَن تَطَّوَّعَ He said, no, unless you want to do uh, to pay extra. And paying extra might fall under um, building a mosque, digging a well, uh, giving charities, helping people. Uh, forgiving those who cannot pay the debts that they have uh, to you. Then Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, قَالَ وَأَن تَصُومَ شَهْرَ رَمَضَانِ You have to fast the month of Ramadan. قَالَ هَلْ عَلَيَّ غَيْرُ He said, do I have to fast anything else? قَالَ لَا إِلَّا أَن تَطَّوَّعَ He said, no, unless you want to do extra. Some people fast um, Monday and Thursday. Some people fast the 13, 14, 15 of the lunar uh, month. Some people fast every other day. So this is extra. But even Muhammad وسلم, said to him, La illa anta tawwa. And the, the, that man said, Qala wallahi la azidu ala dhalika wa la anqus. I swear that I will not do any extra and I will not do any less. What did Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? Qala aflaha in sadaq. He is a winner if he is truthful. So he will be in Jannah. But he will not be at the same level of those who did their best. But he will be from Ashabul Yameen. In one of the hadith, uh, Hadith Qudusi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ما يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه. So my servant will still do the extra deeds until I love him. So this is our goal. We don't want just to be at the door of Jannah. We don't want to be at the lower ranks of Jannah. We want to be up with Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us a shortcut. He said, أقربكم مني مجلسا يوم القيامة أكثركم صلاة علي 
أو كما قال بالحرف So the closest to you to me the closest of you to me on the day of judgment is the one who sends the most salawat to me now ask yourself how many salawat do you send to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, every day knowing that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised everyone who says one salah who sends one salah to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, Allah will send him ten ten folds So have a few minutes every day just to get closer to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Just a few minutes of your 24 hours every day. So what would these people now the, the people women do Jannatan, as we said, the two heavens the, the two gardens the two paradises that we are going to talk to you about now are less in bounties less in what allah has prepared than that paradise which is prepared for those who who fulfill the orders who do extras who who are uh, as as close to allah and to say the muhammad وسلم, as possible So we know now that each person has his own station in Jannah according to his deeds. But we enter Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the repetitive ayah. Which of the blessings of your Lord would you deny? Nan ya Allah, lak alhamd. Thank you, ya Allah, for everything that, for all the blessings that you have given us. Mudhammatan. What does the word mudhammatan mean? Literally, it means dark green. So these, these gardens, the color is dark green. What is Muhammadan uh, is dual. So the the single the singular word of this uh, uh, is al mudham. So what is al mudham? Al mudham is the green color when it's so green that it gets closer to black. And we see this in so fertilized uh, uh, areas, gardens, that when the plants, when the uh, trees of this garden uh, um, uh, get the, the color, their green gets closer to black because of the highest fertilization that is in the ground. So when it gets so dark, so dark green, you feel from uh, a way that it's black. So which of the blessings of your Lord would you deny? None, ya Allah. Lak alhamd, ya Allah. Now, we will be doing some comparisons between these two lower in ranks uh, gardens than the other uh, higher gardens. What do we have? فِيهِمَا عَيْنَانِ نَضَّاخَتَانِ There are two springs in these uh, uh, gardens, in these paradises, that what happened? That they are spouting. What about the previous, the previous uh, gardens? In the, in the previous gardens, we have two springs flowing. And flowing is much nicer, much, much uh, uh, fancier than just spouting. فَبِأَيِّ آلَاءِ رَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَانِ 
So which of the blessings of you, Lord, would you deny? Nan, ya Allah. Alhamdulillah. Fihima, fakihatun, wa nakhlun, wa rumman. Therein, there are fruits, palm trees, and pomegranates. So we have less than what we have in the other gardens. There, fihima min kulli fakihatin zawjan. In that garden, in those gardens, there are every fruit, every fruit possible, and it's two kinds. But here, we just have a few. We, we have less. So which of, your, of these blessings of you, Lord, that you deny? None, ya Allah. Laka alhamdu, ya Allah. So what does, what does this repetition mean? Reminding us of the blessings. Here we have some type of uh, um, mocking those who are deprived of these shannas, of these gardens. So a lot of bounties, a lot of things that Allah has prepared, but they missed. Let's go on. What do we have? What else do we have here? Fihinna khayratun hisan. In those gardens, there are good and beautiful women. Now, compared to the other, to the other gardens, what do we have? Fihinna qasiratu tarfi lam yatmithunna insun qablahum wala jan. We have women who are limiting their glances. They haven't been touched by any man or, or jinn. So these, the point is, الطرف, so they are limiting their glances. They are looking only at their husbands. They're not looking at any other husbands. They are not looking at any other men. Why? Because this husband suffices them. What about the others? The other ones are also so beautiful, but what the, the following two ayahs will, uh, ayah will explain. So which of the blessings of you, Lord, would you deny? So these beautiful women are fair ones. They are reserved in pavilions. So these, these women are good. They are khayrat, khayrat, fihinna khayrat al hisan. So they, they don't get angry, they don't get sad. They, everything is good about them. And they are assigned to the husband. You see the difference? The other ones, they by themselves would limit their glances. They don't want to look at others. There, they are qasirat al-tarf, qasirat by their choice. But here they are maqsurat. Maqsurat means someone made them so. Fihinna qasi khayratun hisan fabi ayyi alai rabbikuma tukadziban hurun maqsuratun fil khiyam. So, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe the others in that? Uh, garden. He said, They are amazingly beautiful. 
But here he said, Hurun. These are beautiful. The other ones are amazingly beautiful. So which, which of you, of the blessings of you, Lord, would you deny? None, ya Allah. Like, alhamdulillah. لم يطمسهن إنس قبلهم ولا جان. This is the only description that is com uh, that is the same with the other women. They are untouched before by any jinn or any any uh, human. They are virgins. They are pure. فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان. So which of the blessings of you, Lord, would you deny? None, ya Allah. None, ya Allah. Alhamdulillah. Muttakiina ala rafrafin khudrin wa'abqariyin hisan. They're reclining on green cushions. And beautiful fine carpets. What about what about the others? The better, the higher uh, gardens, the higher paradise. What what how how the people? What about them over there? متكئين على فرش بطائنها من استبرق وجن الجنتين دان بطائنها من استبرق so they are reclining on beds and cushions who, who, whose leanings are of silk brocade. They are so, so, so fancy. And the fruit there in those higher jannas, in those, in those higher gardens, the fruit would come down, would hang down to you just to get to get them. So while you are sitting, reclining, enjoying your time, you think, oh, I want to have an apple. The branch of the tree would come to you and you will pick up that apple. You're longing there, huh? Subhanallah. Ya Allah. متكئين على رفرف خضر وعبقري حسان. Now in Surah Al Ghashiyah, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, وَزَرَابِيُّ مَبْثُوثَ And carpets spread around. And imagine the fancy high quality super carpets that are there so these this is the comparison between the jannah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who race to do what allah wants those who race to fulfill the orders of Allah on time, on time. They do not, they do not delay their prayers. They do not delay their duties. They do not, when, you, when, when the adhan comes in and you get yourself prepared, you do your wudu and you uh, stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you pray the sunnah before the, before the fard, and then you are getting yourself prepared for the prayer, for the fard that you are obliged to perform. So now you are ready to talk directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your mind in the prayer itself, you are not distracted from anything. Nothing will, uh, will, will be uh, uh, engaging uh, in your mind. You are 100% with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
And this is how our prayers should be. And remember that from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ They are in their prayer, they are present. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants to reward those who are obeying him. So he made several things that we can do every day just to stay on the track, just to be on the, on the right path. And the one thing that holds you fast and steady on the path is the Salah, is the Quran. And following the Sunnah. So try to, try to get as much as you can of these things that are easy to do, but we have to do them with, while we are fully present with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the ways of being present in the prayer while you are praying. First of all, just pray on time. Do not delay your prayer. Do not delay your prayer. Then when, when this, uh, uh, one, one, another thing is that before you start praying, just get yourself prepared. Say, A'udhu Billahi min ash rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim and then do your intention. And this would outcast shaitan a little bit. This would outcast the whisper of shaitan, and you will be able to focus more in your prayer. Another thing, if you want to really to focus on your prayer, try to memorize new ayahs and say them in your prayer you will be focusing 100% on the Quran that you will be reading. And another thing, when you memorize, try to understand what you are saying. Try to know the tafsir of the ayahs that you will be saying, that you will be reciting. So now if you, if you get to get engaged with anything, you will be thinking of the meanings of the ayahs you are, you are reciting and not by any other dunya things. So these are four, four things that you can do just to get more focused on your prayer. Once Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was watching a man praying when he said salam, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi told him, go repeat your prayer, do it again. You did not pray. And if you notice in the Quran, and, and the reason for that, he was uh, doing it so fast, no, concern, no focusing on the prayer. And if you notice something in the Quran while you are reading the Quran, when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala talks about praying, he doesn't say the word praying by itself. He doesn't say, Salla, you salli, you salluna, sallu. He says, perform the prayer. Aqimu salah, yuqimuna salah. You see? So aqimu means perform the prayer. Don't just make it just, uh, uh, just movements up and down, uh, uh, knowing nothing what you said or... Uh, you, you, uh, did you pray two rakahs or three rakahs or four rakahs? So just get yourself prepared before standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repeated this ayah. So which of the blessings of you, Lord, which of the blessings of you, Lord, are you denying? Or would you deny? So 
as we mentioned earlier, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated this word, this ayah, because of the importance of this ayah. Don't think that it's just repetitive ayah. No, 31 times in this surah, this ayah was repeated, but each would be reminding us of something, of a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Now, take a moment and think of the blessings, of all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on you. Think. Do you need anyone to walk you? Do you need anyone to help you stand up? Do you need anyone help? to help you standing, uh, sitting down? Do you need anyone to help you to go to bed? Do you need anyone help you to go out of bed? Do you need any pill medicine to just to fall asleep? Do you need any, any help of any person around you? You can for, do nothing unless you have help from others. Imagine all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Sight, hearing, heart, mind, conscious, everything. So Allah has given us a lot. How can we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that? There is a hadith that talks about the, uh, the blessings of Salatul Duha. We all know Duha prayer. And uh, in Duha prayer, we have uh, the, the benefits or the, the merits of the Duha prayer is that it is considered as uh, uh, as a zakah for our our well being. So, what does what is the hadith? كل كل سلامة من الناس عليه صدقة. This is how the hadith hadith starts. And sulama is the, 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 the smallest bone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you, uh, has given you. Look at your hand, look at your fingers. How many bones are there in your fingers? How many bones in the hand? How many bones in, the, in, uh, uh, in your face? How many bones in your uh, spine? How, so there is a sadaqah for that. Whenever every day you wake up healthy, then you have to perform this sadaqah. And this sadaqah is to pray two rakahs of sunnah al-duha. So if you have money, you pay zakah for your money to purify your money to get it uh, uh, increased, to get it multiplied. But this Salatul Duha will, will, is, is just a charity for, for your well-being. It's a charity that you don't need anyone to help you walking, standing, sitting, sleeping. So try, try not to miss Salatul Duha. What is Salatul Duha? It's two rakahs. Its time starts uh, about 15 minutes after sunrise until 15 minutes before uh, the zuhur prayer. You can make wudu in this, in this time. And you know, this is the longest time that we don't pray. So just have, stand with Allah. Just, we, we long to be with Allah. So perform Salat al uh, during this time. So these 
these are the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And we say, Ya Allah, we do not deny any of your blessings. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. Tabaraka smu rabbika dhil jalali wal ikram. So blessed is the name of your Lord. Blessed is the name of your Lord. Owner of majesty and honor and generosity. Blessed, tabarak. Tabarak is to be blessed, to be glorified. So we are glorifying you, Ya Allah. We are worshiping you, Ya Allah. You are the only one who deserves to be worshipped. We worship you not to get to Jannah. We worship you not to, to be away from hellfire. We worship you because you deserve to be, to be worshipped. The one who created this universe, the one who is in control of everything who has created is worth of being worshipped. So blessed is the name of you, Lord. Blessed is he in whose hand is dominion and he is over all things. Competent. Blessed is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who, who gave us everything. Blessed is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the owner of majesty. And he is also the owner of beauty. Sometimes you see people, you feel, oh, you, you feel scared when, they, when you see them. And sometimes you, you see people, you feel, you feel the tranquility in your heart when you see them. Allah has created everybody and has given them, each, each has his own character. Try to be with those people who remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to be with those people whom if you slip, they will get you back on track. Try to be with the people who will always do righteous things because they will remind you to do righteous things. And try always to know who, you, who are the friends of your children because friends would drag their friends. They would drag each other to, the, to their path, whether good or bad. So tabarak, tabarak as murabbik. We have to be strong to face the temptations of the night. We have to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that will give us strength. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, you know, he's the companion of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once uh, the Muslims at the early time, uh, they, they know that Quraysh did not know anything about, about Quran. They have not heard any ayahs of the Quran. And um, they said, who can go, go out and recite Quran on the loud, allowed it so the Quraysh people will hear him. And Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, I will do it. But Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud physically was a weak person. So they said, no, no, we, we will get scared that they will, uh, they will harm me. He said, no, I want to do it. That's loving Allah. So he went, he went out and he recited Quran. Quraysh got mad. So they hit him and hit him and, and hit him until he was bruised everywhere. 
So when he came back to, to the companions, they said, for this, we didn't want you to do it. He said, Wallahi, I am ready to do it again tomorrow for the sake of Allah. This is the love that we want. Depend on Allah and fear nobody. So this is Surah Ar-Rahman. We come to the last ayah of Surah Ar-Rahman. If I want to remind you of the beginning of the first, very first ayah, what was the first ayah of the surah? Ar-Rahman. So the ayah is named for the first word of the ayah. And we have this feature in several ayahs, Surah Al-Fajr because of Surah Al-Fajr. We say Surah, uh, Surah Amma because of uh, the first word Amma, Yatasa'alun. Surah uh, Al-Mulk, which is called Tabarak, where because of the first word of the Surah, Tabarak Al-Ladhi Biyadihi Al-Mulk. So now, the, the Surah started with Ar-Rahman. And as we mentioned earlier, Ar-Rahman is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, 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 the name of Allah that would give us hope in our hearts that he is the most merciful. And he, when he created mercy, he divided it into 100 portions and he descended just one portion into this dunya and he kept the 99 portions to the akhirah so he will have mercy on the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Ar-Rahman, he is Rahman, he is merciful by nature. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says, Ar-Rahman, and the surah goes on talking about all the blessings that we have in, the, in this surah. What, did it, what, did, what does the surah end with? Tabarak asmu rabbika dhil jalali wal ikram. Blessed is the name of your Lord, the owner of majesty and honor and honor and generosity. So again, it ended up with two with a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Dil Jalali wal Ikram. It's the surah started with a name of Allah and ended with another name of Allah. Allah is the one who gave us all the blessings. So let's always keep remembering these blessings. That let's always keep thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about these blessings. And we mentioned earlier that there are so many forms of uh, um, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many forms. But the highest is the highest is to say, Allahumma laka alhamdu kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultani. Ya Allah, this is what we want to thank you for. This is, we want to thank you for, the, for everything, for everything you have created for us. We want to thank you for everything that you have prepared for us. Ya Allah, laka alhamdu. كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك. Suitable. Thanks for you, Ya Allah. Thanks is suitable to the grace of your face and the greatness of your supreme authority. The angels did not know how to write this. How, how, how much good deeds should they write in the record of a person who said it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Write it as is, and I will reward him, my, my servant, for saying this. Ya Rabbi, laka alhamdu, kama yambaghi li jalali wajhika wa'azimi sultanik. 
And also, when we want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't know how to thank him. And that's why we say, Allahumma la uhsi thana'an alayka anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. I cannot praise you the way you deserve. Laka alhamdu ya Allah. Laka alhamdu ya Rahman. Laka alhamdu ya zal jalali wal ikram. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. And with this, we come to the end of the tafsir of Surah uh, Ar-Rahman. And inshallah, next week we will be starting with Surah Al-Waqi'ah. We ask you, Ya Allah, to accept us. We ask you, Ya Allah, to, to teach us from your divine knowledge. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-firdaws al-a'la wa murafaqata habibika sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu alayka ya sayyidi, ya Rasulullah. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته